this is the group of zebrafish that we're going to spawn today and tomorrow. These blue and yellow ones are some that I just purchased. And I guess they must be worth $9.99 because I bought them. I don't know if they're really beautiful, but they are interesting. I like more than that, I, I love this little leopard with the long fins. That's what I'm working toward this year. More leopards with long, long fins. You can see these red females are really ready to spawn tonight. And there's my little blue male lip with the really long fins. He's just beautiful. I'm hoping that he spawns with one of the blue and yellow ones tonight. And we'll be fattening them up and uh, getting them ready to uh, produce. Here comes my little leopard. The marbles and the glass on the bottom are there to catch the eggs and hide them from the fish in the morning when they start to spawn at daybreak. I put the cardboard around the tank already and in about a half an hour I'll cover the tank and make sure that they get at least 10 hours of darkness. In the beginning of June uh, we have real long days and short nights so I have to darken the tank with cardboard to get the best spawn. The zebrafish spawn best with 10 hours of darkness. This is the greenhouse where Sally Jo grows all of her different live foods and I'll show you the incredible amount of rotifers and paramecium in her bucket. She has different cultures going freshwater and saltwater in all of these different buckets and she feeds them and takes care of them every day and that allows us to harvest an unbelievable amount of live food. It's hard to show there's uh, just little clouds along the surface. It looks like a, a dusty cloud and they have different uh, uh, patterns they group together and uh, when you look at this uh, brown bread under the microscope it's just completely covered with paramecium and bacteria and that's what the uh, rotifers and then the copepods eat. It's hard to believe that this water is clear and that every bit of the color is just from millions of microscopic rotifers and uh, there, one thing that will gladden the heart of Sally Joe is this tiny mosquito egg right here. There's a raft of mosquito eggs and uh, that, those will hatch into uh, microscopic mosquito larvae in a couple of days. And uh, evidently the mother mosquito thought this was a perfect... They won't, they won't lay their eggs in clean water. They know there's something that uh, triggers them to only lay their eggs in the kind of water that would have a a population of uh, microorganisms that would feed their larvae so pretty interesting by the grace of God our mosquito population here at the greenhouses only like to bite birds so of the 30 kinds of mosquitoes that we could have here in southern Idaho we're happy that ours uh, like to go out and hunt birds instead of us I'm amazed that these breeders, which are over an inch long, can eat these rotifers. They just absolutely love them. And uh, the rotifers seem to be too microscopic for them to possibly be able to find. But they just love them. They go around and they have a certain kind of movement that you can tell from the time they're born, that bobbing, eating mo movement. And uh, these breeders will just clean up every bit of this rotifers. And uh, then also, when their eggs hatch in the next few days, they'll uh, have plenty of rotifers already in the tank. So the babies will have rotifers and paramecium on day one.
More is known about the genetics of zebrafish than any other fish in the world. There's an absolute wealth of information known about the genetics of zebrafish because they're used to uh, study the uh, larval and uh, uh, development of everything from the fish to the person next to you because the, the larva and the uh, embryos are very very close when they're at that particular part of their development very primitive and so are we 